Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision lesson. Now, summer is officially over. Where did all the time go? And especially if you are heading into year 11, you want to start the year off strong, okay? So this video is especially for those of you going into year 11, which is arguably, if not arguably, it is the most important year of your academic life so far, okay? This is the all important GCSE year and I want you guys to start off strong now. This video is going to address lots of comments and questions that I tend to get from students over and over again. Barbara, what's the difference between language and structure? Miss, first year tutors, what's language? What's structure? I'm still confused. So guys, what I want to do is to offer you guys the definitive list of language techniques to spot, write and talk about when you're tackling language paper one and paper two, but also structure techniques to commit to memory and to look for when you are practicing and preparing for your language paper one and paper two exams in this very, very crucial year. So guys, as you can see behind me, I literally have listed out all the top important language techniques to just commit to memory. Remember this from the start of the year and consistently apply it to your language paper one and paper two practice. But also guys, the definitive list of structure techniques to commit to memory, look for and get accustomed to practicing and identifying and analyzing when it comes to structure. And guys, by the way, I've actually put this into a very brief one page PDF file. Check the download link, download it, especially if you want just your own copy of this language list and this structure list, download it. And hopefully guys, this definitive list will clear up any final lingering questions you might have when it comes to language techniques, what to write about, what to talk about when you're looking at language paper one, paper two, but of course also structure techniques when it comes to language paper one and paper two. Now, just to be clear, when it comes to language, language analysis, when you're writing about language for paper one, for example, question number two, when it comes to language and you're reading an extract, Firstly, make sure you distinguish between language, which you can zoom in on and do some word level analysis when you're analyzing what the author has written, but then taking a step back using slightly more advanced language techniques and then thinking about what the impact is on readers, okay? So remember, when it comes to language, be very familiar with these basic building block language techniques, okay? And there, to be honest, there's five to commit to memory. These are the ones that you should use when you're doing word level analysis, okay? It's noun, verb, adjective, adverb, and pronoun. Those five techniques will carry you, okay? When you're looking at any extracts and you're analyzing and writing about it and then zooming in and doing some word level analysis, this is in the explanation part in your paragraph, literally use these five techniques and you will find when you're doing your zooming in and your word level analysis to get that grade eight and grade nine. However, when you're engaging in analysis, when you're talking about, okay, I've spotted a language technique. Let me do some analytical work here. Let me talk about, okay, this is how it impacts us as readers. This is what the writer wants us to feel. These are some really powerful analytical techniques to always remember and to always look out for. By the way, guys, you are combining these two, okay? You talk about, you point out the analytical techniques, but then you then do some zooming in and word level analysis with this stuff, okay? So just to run through the analytical language techniques list, you want to always remember to look for alliteration, Sibilance, to be honest, sibilance and alliteration go together because it's two or more words that start with the same letter. Sibilance is two or more words that start with S. Then you've got metaphor, simile, personification, oxymoron, hyperbole, onomatopoeia, rule of three, semantic field, which for me is a personal favorite because anything can belong to a semantic field. Remember, semantic field is when two or more words, when you spot them, they belong to a wider category. For example, roses, daffodils, lilies belong to the category or the semantic field of flowers okay so for me i love that it sounds super clever but it's actually quite easy and straightforward to spot okay pathetic fallacy cynic doke imagery as well as colloquial language by the way guys colloquial language just means when an author or writer uses informal language okay that is the definitive list of language techniques to literally commit to memory memorize these get accustomed early on in the year to spotting these and writing about it when writing and engaging in a language question. However, you need to also be clear on structure, okay? And this is the definitive list, I would argue, of structure techniques that you should be familiar with. Let's start with the basics, okay? The easy wins when it comes to structure. Repetition is a really, really easy win when it comes to structural techniques. As is ellipsis, ellipsis is just the three dots, okay? 
one line sentences okay so when you have you know a paragraph and then the paragraph is followed by just a one line sentence that's a really powerful technique okay you're kind of reading 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 and then you have this one line sentence it really shifts your focus onto that one line sentence really powerful structural technique very easy win also a minor sentence this is a one word sentence listing and you've got you need to know the difference between a syndeton or asyndentic listing versus polysyndeton. A syndeton is when you've got the listing where there's no and, but because it's just stuff that's listed with lots of commas, polysyndeton or polysyndentic listing is where you've got this and this and this and this or this, but this, but this, but this. That's polysyndeton, okay? Sounds really fancy, really straightforward. You've got anaphora, cataphora, and then off, obviously sentence types. That counts as structure. So you've got simple sentence, compound sentence, and complex sentence. Those are the easy wins when it comes to structure. However, let's look at the slightly more advanced structural techniques that exam boards absolutely love when students are able to talk about it, to notice it first, and then extract from that Okay, I think this is what the writer intent might, might be. This is how the structure is shifting within this extract. So let's look at some advanced structure technique. Circular structure, this is when the extract starts and ends in the same point, okay? Guys, if you're not clear on circular structure, a really good example of this is inspector calls. Inspector calls starts off with an inspector coming in to question a family and it ends with yet another inspector or police officer coming in to question a family. That's perfect circular structure. The next advanced structure technique is shifts in time. If there's a flashback or a flash forward, that's a structural technique. The other structural technique is zooming in or out, zooming in on one particular character or going from character, one particular thing, and then panning out, talking about the environment, talking about general things that are happening around. Zooming in or out is a really powerful advanced structural technique. Also, the sudden or gradual introduction of new characters in different points of a story. So maybe for instance, the story starts by talking and describing in lots of detail a house and then suddenly a dog pops out and then we follow the dog, you know, rover the dog as it's walking through and it's weaving through these different places in the house. That actually counts as the sudden introduction of a new character early on in the story. It can happen middle in the story, it can happen in the end of a story, okay? That is a structural technique. Also, the shift from or moving in from the inside world to the outside world. What this means is sometimes the narrative structure shifts, right? So maybe for instance, the writer will be talking about how they're feeling as they're walking along. Oh, I was really sad, I was really sad. Then there's maybe dialogue that happens, right? The inside world, the outside world impacts the narrator. Then we've got, you know, the series of dialogue, the narrator is talking to somebody. That counts as a shift from the inside to the outside world, okay? That's a really powerful advanced structural technique to mention. Also, the switching between different points of view. So for instance, if the writer writes it from the perspective of a woman, and then, you know, um, the paragraph switches to the perspective of a man, basically switching the narrative between different characters or different points of view, that also is structure. Even for instance, if the narrative shifts from describing something from the inside of a house, and then the narrative shifts to the top of a hill, for instance, that's also a shift, okay? That's really powerful structural techniques. The final structure technique, and this is a very advanced one, is positioning key sentences and their impact on the whole text. Actually, this ties into the one line sentence and the minor sentence. So for instance, maybe a passage will start with like two really chunky paragraphs. And then in the middle where there's the sudden volta or the sudden shift in the narrative, it's a one line sentence or a one word sentence. That counts as really strategic positioning of key sentences. And this impacts the audience. Maybe it indicates a shift um, in focus, maybe it indicates the rise of tension and so on, okay? That is structure and especially these are really advanced structural techniques that you should try your best to really have a handle early on in the year in picking out, in analyzing, in selecting when you're looking at any extract either for language paper one or for language paper two. And of course, as I mentioned, also commit these techniques to memory when it comes to language, okay? So guys, I hope this is gonna be the last time I make a language versus structure techniques. This is something that you guys constantly keep on asking. One of the main comments I keep on getting, gut, you know, it's, Barbara, I'm not clear on what language is. What's structure, what's language, okay? So guys, as I mentioned, I've also, to help you along your journey, I have made this into a very easily downloadable PDF file. So just literally click on the link below and you'll be able to download that for free, okay? So guys, I hope this helps and as I said, in my announcement within the comments guys i would love to hear from you i would love to hear you know what videos you guys want me to see more of within the coming year okay lots of you have asked for language paper one videos 
Lots of you have also asked for Edexcel style videos as opposed to only AQA videos. So guys, please do let me know. I'm gonna be putting out polls and stuff. Do vote and let me know what you'd like to see more of. Thank you so much for listening.